Before today's video begins, I'd just like to say a huge thanks to everybody who's been supporting the series so far. Your likes, your comments on the videos really mean a lot to me, and the discussion that I've been able to have with people who've been watching the series has really made the game more enjoyable for me. I mean, I was already enjoying it, but being able to talk about it so much with other people who are both experiencing the game for the first time like me, and also people who know the game already, it's really increased my enjoyment of the game. I hope you guys stick around for the rest of the series. Thank you once again for all the support. Let's get started with today's video. Welcome back to Danganronpa V3. Tenko is dead and I am sad. I really liked Tenko a lot. This is the first death in this game that's really affected me, as you could probably have to told from the last video. Uh, yeah, I'm really upset about this. So, I suppose we have to find out who did this. I have some theories, I've had some thoughts, I've had a bit of time to think about this. So let's get to it. We'll start by investigating her body. It zooms us in. Okay, so let's start with the body. Tenko's dead body. She took her last breath crouched over like this. According to the Monokuma file, her only injury is the stab wound to her neck. This wound was fatal. This must have caused instant death. I didn't hear a scream during the seance. Uh, wait. Yeah, we heard the thud. Understood. I will not say a word until the seance is over. Huh, I miss her already. Would Tenka really keep her mouth shut despite the pain? Yeah, I think... Well, you think she died instantly, right? So she would have, and if not, she was a very mentally disciplined person, right? Nope. Her death might not have been instant, but she couldn't have gone far before she bled out. Huh? What do you mean? You were concerned about that, right? Okay. With a wound this deep, the victim is too shocked to do anything except die. Uh, um, You're speaking from experience? Of course. Quick deaths are my specialty. Well then, that makes sense. The real question is, what was she killed with? I don't see a murder weapon around. You're right, I don't see an obvious murder weapon. That could be a clue. Tenko's last moments. <sighs> I'm so sad. So what really stood out to me straight away is this floorboard. Ah, this floorboard is loose. And it's the one right under Tenko. Why, Why is this floorboard loose? If I remember correctly. It wasn't like this before. It must have come loose during the seance. Why would it come loose during the seance? But... A floorboard this thick and heavy wouldn't have come loose easily. Then someone must have loosened it on purpose. Yeah, so what I've been thinking is that whoever did this knew about the seance and knew how it was meant to be done. I don't know who that is, but they obviously knew enough about the seance to know that someone will be in the middle of the room that this floorboard would be the one underneath them. Tenko could not have moved that while under the cage, right? So it had to have been loosened before. So I'm thinking someone came from beneath, perhaps, and moved it. I still don't know how Tenko was stabbed in the back of the neck, though. But I'm sure more will become apparent. Let's have a look at the stone. There's a rock next to Tenko's body. This must be... The one she put her forehead on. Yeah. I don't see how this is important. Tenko had her forehead on this rock, hunched over. She had to make herself small to fit inside the cage. Perhaps that's evidence as to how she was positioned under the cage? And there's the cage itself, which has blood on it. This is the cage used in the seance. It looks to be around three feet high and five feet wide. It's a pretty large iron cage. Okay. Big enough for a person to fit inside. Well, yeah, we know that. During the seance, Kikichi and I covered Tenko with the cage. We were supposed to remove it as well. But it was Himiko who rushed in and removed the cage first. If it took two people to carry that, and then Himiko picked it up all by herself, I don't know what that means. I mean, it did say that she was fueled by desperation, and, you know, in those moments, you do get stronger. Hey, look at this. A bloodstain on the bottom of the cage. 
probably Tanko's blood, yeah? That's true. Yes, I imagine so. The spatter would have been made when she was killed. What do you mean? Which means Tanko was killed while she was inside the cage. Okay. I think you're right. Tanko went under the cage before the seance. But when the cage was lifted after the seance, she was already dead. If she was stabbed right where the cage was lift, when the cage was lifted, that would explain the blood stain, right? Huh? Hmm. Perhaps she wasn't killed during the séance, but the exact moment when the cage was lifted. That is a possibility. Oh no. I think I know where this is going, but we need more evidence before we can even start to think about that. I think that's everything around here. Let's just double check. Since we have investigative mode. Ah, of course, this loose floorboard at the back. Or this hole. They see. During the seance, I had a really bad feeling. I knew something bad was going to happen. Um, it talked about this hole in the corner, and that was the corner that Himiko was standing in. And at first, I thought that meant that she could have been the victim. But now, does this implicate her? There's no way, right? There's a small opening in the corner of the room. It doesn't look big enough for a person to get through, but still. A hole? Looks like there's space under here too. Oh, hold on. I can see something below. It looks like something dropped down there. What? Something dropped down there? You got a minute? After we check everywhere else, why don't we go under the floor and see for ourselves? Okay. Right, let's do it. Okay. I really hope that doesn't implicate Himiko. What else have we got? We got so many things, actually. Um, actually, let's go back into the body, because I believe investigative mode told us that we had something we could examine here. But we can't click on it. Okay, I guess that's just Kibo, then. Uh, let's look at this. It's the white sheet we used for the seance. Surely this should have... If this doesn't have blood on it, then the moment of the cage being removed being the point of murder might be realistic. Kia was the one who removed it. Yeah. But there was already blood on the floor at that point. This cloth is pretty thick. It's similar to a window curtain, but it's completely opaque. And on the back... Look, there's a blood stain on it, right around the middle of the sheet but no hole in the fabric. Right, so she surely had to have been killed before the cage was lifted up. Which means Tenko wasn't stabbed through this cloth. She was stabbed while underneath the cloth. Okay, we've immediately debunked that theory, that's good. That doesn't mean that, like, Himiko would have been implicated as the murderer for lifting the cage off of her, right? That can't have been possible, because there was already... I mean, there was already blood on the floor at that point, and there was, uh, there was blood on the cloth, and the cloth wasn't on it when she lifted the cage up. So they can't spin it like that. Dog statue. It's the wooden dog statue used in the seance. I believe it's called the Dog God. During the seance, this wooden statue was on top of the cage. It took four of us to remove it. Yep. Yeah. This wooden statue is pretty heavy. 175 pounds, I think Kyo said. Yeah, that's right. That's about the weight of two girls. What? what do you know about girls? Have you ever touched a woman besides your mother? Ooh, Maki. That's a bit mean, isn't it? Uh, um, what? what? I'm kidding. Anyway. Is this... If this heavy thing was on top of the cage, then Tenko wouldn't have been able to get out easily. Uh, oh. Yeah, you're right about that. That didn't sound like you were kidding out here. Right. So it's impossible that someone in the room killed her through the cage. There's no hole in the cloth. There's no way that they could have removed the dog statue to lift up the cage and then kill her. Because it would have taken at least, you would think, at least three people. It took four of us to lift it originally. Yeah, there's no way that anyone in the room did this. So that clears Kikichi, that clears Himiko, that clears... Obviously, myself and Kyo as well. Man, this case, actually something I noticed about this case straight away after investigating earlier was the amount of parallels to previous cases in Danganronpa games. 
There was the bloody duct tape, which is like um, chapter five of Danganronpa one, which that's obviously used to implicate Kyoko. There was the golden katana, which was from the very first case of Danganronpa one. Then there's the floorboards here, which makes me think of the first case of Danganronpa two. They've got to be doing that deliberately, right? Anyway, let's continue investigating. It's the magic circle Kyo drew on the floor. Well, at least it was. It's been completely stomped over. I suppose it was unavoidable. Was this drawn with salt? Whenever I perform a seance, I always use salt. Are you feeling all right? You sound ridiculous. Ridiculous? I've performed many successful seances. Why? I've even had spirits enter my bot. Shut up. I don't want to hear about your stupid delusions. Maki really doesn't beat around the bush. It's kind of refreshing, actually. In any case, with all these footprints, I can't make the original circle out. We'll find out in Kyo's lab. It should be written in the Cage Dog Village document. Isn't that right, Kyo? He seems depressed. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah. I wonder what significance that could have. And then there's the candles up here. Candles hung on the walls. They're the only source of light in the room. There are no windows, so without the candles it was pitch black. But how did the culprit kill Tenko in complete darkness? I think we'll find out if we go under the floorboards. I guess that's the same. Hey, Kibo. Leave it to me. <laughs> Leave it to me. I will become the guiding light that shines on you all. Is that it? Uh, so we finished investigating in here? I guess we just have to talk to everyone. Kokichi, how you doing, buddy? Man, what a lame function. You could have made him a transformer. I said that already. Mew. I'm not... What is... What even is Mew? This investigation is over and shut. And it's all thanks to me for giving Kibo his new function. Oh my... Now then, Tenko's killer is obviously one of you stupid assholes who signed up to do this bullshit seance in the first place. No, uh, no not necessarily. Huh? huh? Seriously? This seance was clearly a setup to lure her in and kill her. How could someone who wasn't in the room kill her? Could it be so you believe that Tenko was killed during the seance? There's no other possibility, shit for brains. God, don't you even know that? Again, Miyu is right in parts. It is true that Tenko was alive before the seance. This is the point of no return. Huh. Uh, I'm so sad. Tenko answered Kyo, so at that point she was most certainly alive. But when the candles were relit, she was dead. Yeah. That means she was killed in the dark, I'm positive. What time exactly was Tenko killed after the candles were blown out? That may be an important point of this case. Well, we know the point in the song when we heard that clunk. That's, we are assuming, when she was killed. Kyo, what have you got to say? Why? Be. Why did this... I knew it. Kyo, I know the murder was pretty shocking. But of, course. of course, I'm shocked about that as well, but why did the seance fail? We performed all of the steps flawlessly. He seemed more concerned by that than by the murder. Oh, if we perform the caged child again, and summon Tenko's spirit this time. This Cut the crap. Just tell me what happened during the seance. Both you and Shuichi were present, right? Did she get killed during the seance? I see, yes. True, it may be best to move past what happened, to know why the seance failed. Is that Whatever, just hurry up. At the time, in order to begin the seance, we had Tenko, the spiritual medium, position herself as a turtle within the magic circle, so her head touched the marker stone. Then Shuichi and Kokichi placed the cage over Tenko, and after that I placed the white cloth over the cage. Then all four of us placed the wooden dog statue atop the cage. Afterwards we stood in the four corners of the room. Kokichi and Shuichi blew out the candles. Finally, we all sang the Caged Child song. The seance should have been complete, but... 
Ah, now that you mention it, I remember hearing a strange sound during the song. Yeah. It sounds like wood breaking, right? So that must have been when the floorboard was moved or came loose. It is a mystery to me as well. I thought someone may have tripped, perhaps. That was a pretty loud sound for someone tripping. Perhaps Kyo knows something. What do you mean? And then what happened? Yes. Ah, we called out to her, but no reply came. I had Shuichi and Kokichi relight the candles. And then we removed all the items from within the magic circle in the opposite order. First, all four of us removed the statue, then I took off the white cloth, and then... Himiko ran over to the cage, and the moment she lifted it... Hmm. Then it sounds like Tenko was definitely killed during the seance. No. But would it not be difficult in such darkness? Besides, she was inside the cage, yes? Then, then when was she killed? Yeah, that is a problem. There is another problem. And that is, why ever did the seance fail? I simply cannot figure it out. Maybe someone moved from their corner? Did someone else sneak in here? Obviously, since this seance was clearly a sham. Maki was never one to pull her punches. A lot of the information we get there involves three of us and not Himiko. I really... If Himiko is somehow involved in Tenko's death, my heart will just break. Hey. Maki, we've finished investigating up here. Perhaps we should check under the floor. By the way. It seems pretty dark down there. What should we use for light? That's true. Let's bring a candle. With Kibo's light from up here, that should be fine. Okay. Then I'll go get a candle. Remove that floorboard so we can go down. Okay, okay got it. Well, what's this going to reveal? I pulled off some floorboards near the hole and took the candle from Maki. Then we carefully made our way through the hole and under the floor. This is a lot more spacious than I thought. You can move pretty easily on all fours. Okay. Let's look around for clues. Well... It'd look pretty stupid if we found no clues after crawling around in this dusty place. Uh... Yeah. Right then. Oh, there's a sickle there, so I'm guessing that's the murder weapon. Aha! This is exactly what I thought might have happened. If someone came in from another room, they would have had to go under the floor. Like this. Right, well, let's start with this then. There's a sickle here, and there's blood all over it. The blood on the sickle is fresh. This is it, we found the murder weapon. Is this... this came from my research lab. Huh? It did? Well... A sickle can be used to assassinate a target. This would explain how they got to the back of her neck from below, right? It can be thrown without losing any lethality, and you can hide it under your clothes too. Well... If she was attacked with this, she wouldn't stand a chance. The blade is about six inches. Right. And since Tenko was in the cage, she wouldn't have been able to defend herself. But even if this is our murder weapon, how did the culprit attack Tenko in the cage? The blade could fit through the gaps in the cage, but could it reach her neck? That's true. The cage is three feet high. If you were to stab into it with a six inch blade, well, it would depend on Tenko's posture, but I don't think it's impossible. Then her posture is the question. Hey, hey. hey if the weapon is down here, the culprit must have thrown it away, right? That's true. Perhaps after killing Tenko, the culprit threw the sickle under the floor in the dark. Oh no. Or they could have been under the floor the entire time. Either of those is possible. Oh no. If we think about the geography of this... If we're facing the same way down here as we were in that room above, then that's right where the hole is. In, this, in the floor here, and that's where Himiko was standing. Oh no. Blood dripping from gaps in the floorboards. Fresh blood. This is definitely Tenko's. Yeah. Dried blood? There's a blood stain on the ground underneath the loose floorboard. But that's pretty far from where Tenko's blood is dripping down. 
It's under the same floorboard, just at different ends. Why is there blood here? Hey, the back of the floorboard has blood on it too. You're right, there's a little bit of blood on the underside of this floorboard. What do you mean? Did Tenko's blood splatter when she got killed? That's true. I wonder, I can't really be sure yet. Okay. But these blood stains here are completely dry. There must be some reason these particular stains are dry. Hmm. I don't know why that could be right now. Ah, yeah, so you can examine this. Ah, look, part of the cross piece that supports the floorboard is cut off. It's near the loose floorboard, and the portion missing is about the same width, too. And from what I can see of it, it wasn't broken off naturally, this was cut by someone. There should be saws in the warehouse, so they could have used that. The question is why? Another cross piece is supporting the floorboard, so it might not fail if this portion is missing. It might not fall if this portion is missing. Then... So what purpose did this serve? The floorboard underneath Tenko's body is loose, and the cross piece supporting it has been cut. If the culprit did all of this, then why? It has to have been premeditated, this wasn't a spur of the moment. Someone knew this seance was going on, they knew exactly how it was going to happen. Of course, this suggests that someone came in from another room. Some of the wood is corroded and is broken off so you can see into the next room. Mm -hmm. This is the wall of the empty room, right? Looks like there's wood along the wall. This part is rotted away. Mm. It looks like natural rot, this hole wasn't made intentionally. But I can get into the next room through here. That's true. If I remember correctly, the room next door is also empty, right? Then the culprit could have gone from room to room by moving under here instead of using the hallway. No. True, but it would have been difficult moving around under the floor. We did alright because we had a light, without that it'd be pitch black. That might make it impossible to move around in there. Nope. Then they could have used a light like we're doing right now. Well. True. They used a light to move around under the floor, is that possible? Oh no. I think we've finished investigating here. Is that all right? Maki, you want to head back up? Glad you asked, I was starting to get fed up with all this dust. She's a bit of a clean freak, isn't she? After Maki and I crawled out from under the floor, we put the floorboards back. And returned to our investigation. By the way, We've only been investigating this room, are you sure that's wise? Huh? What do you mean? Because if Angie and Tenko have different killers, then the blackened we need to vote for is... You're right. The culprit for the first murder, the culprit who killed Angie. That's what Monokuma said. Then... So instead of investigating Tenko's death, shouldn't we be investigating Angie's? Uh, yes, of course. But... but this is bigger than the killing game. For the sake of the two who died, I need to reveal the truth of both their deaths. Hmm. Well, I understand if you feel that way. But if you plan on investigating the other crime scene again, we should probably hurry. Right. Now this whole one blackened deal? The game did this for a reason. Hey! Himiko! Hey, Himiko! Be strong, Himiko! Wait. Gonta, if you shake Himiko that much, she's going to break! But... But she's not talking! It's like Himiko not even here! Like I thought. She must have really been shocked over Tenko. Let's leave her be for now. Mm. Okay. Himiko... God, my heart can't take this. When I came to the hallway, a scene more surprising than I could ever imagine unfolded. What the fuck? No way, no way. This motherfucker. You piece of shit. Did I surprise you? Were you gonna scream and cry in terror? What are you doing? Oh, sorry, I'm just a little lightheaded from the blood loss. Yeah, this is real blood. Why? Okay, so what are you doing? I got curious about something, so I decided to search the empty room next door. Then, suddenly, I stepped through the floorboard. You stepped through a floorboard? Jeez, that got me good. Because of this, I tripped and fell pretty hard. If you're going to lose consciousness, do it after you tell us everything. 
Oh, sorry, my bad. I guess there was no crosspiece supporting this floorboard, so I kind of stepped through. <laughs> well, bad luck. The crosspiece was gone? Does that mean... Yeah, exactly. It's like, no! No! Confidence. Dreams. That's what the killing game is all about. Killing game fans, hold your head high and watch with your own two eyes. Baseball, soccer, mobile games. They're all nothing compared to the killing game. The killing game just can't be beat! Behold, students! The entrance to the trial grounds! I guess time's up. Oh man, it's because of you guys! I didn't have enough time to check something. What were you trying to check? I wanted to re-research the seance again, so I brought this document with me. But unfortunately... I couldn't find anything new that could be used as a clue. Kyo perfectly reenacted the seance as to what was written in the document. He drew his magic circle the exact same way as in this picture. Not only that, he used the exact same tools too. Nothing suspicious about this whole thing. Well, I've wanted to check on the finer details, but I'll I'll tell you about it later. Kimchi, you alright, buddy? <laughs> At the class trial, so see you there. Get this guy a bandage or something! Kokichi left, the blood loss clearly affecting his footing a bit. Uh, let's go too. Yeah, okay. Is Maki nervous? I see, so even she gets nervous sometimes. What are you staring at? Do you want to die? Oh man. We don't have a whole lot to go on. Is it going to let us in here, or do we have to go straight to the class trial? Ah, oh, man. Well, here we are. So before we go in, let's of course check what little evidence we have, and go over some theories. Right, so we got the Monokuma file. The victim is Ayanji. She was discovered in the Ultimate Artist Lab. And the time of death was approximately 2am. She was killed by a fatal stab wound to the torso. Additionally, she has lacerations on her forehead. The second victim was Tenko. Her body was discovered in a vacant room on the fourth floor. Estimated time of death is 11 a.m. The victim was stabbed in the back of her neck, resulting in death. No other injuries were detected. This door has a sliding lock. The handle of the sliding lock moves at the slightest touch. Something gold and shiny was on the handle. And we know that the room could only have been locked from the outside. From the inside. It could not have been locked from the outside. Tsumugi, her account, says that Angie locked herself in the lab, working on the ritual. She would not unlock the door unless someone from the student council asked her to. And a reminder of who they are. Now you see, what gets me about this, and... Of course, Tenko... Was suspicious, I suppose, and Tsumugi thought she was suspicious. But would Angie have let her in? Would she have accepted Tenko as a member of the student council after the events of the night before? Where she supposedly betrayed the student council by siding with Maki and Shuichi. I feel like at that point she was not a student council member anymore. So that Angie wouldn't have opened the door to her? I don't know if that gets her off or not. The front door has a cylindrical lock. There was only one key, and Monodam swallowed it. Kokichi picked it open, and that's how we found the body. And he can unlock the front door of the lab with his lockpicking skills. I said previously I think that he might have gone in using his lockpicking skills to tamper with the scene, but I don't think he's the murderer. The Necronomicon, the book that Monokuma prepared as a motive... So it gives us the instructions of the resurrection ritual, which couldn't have been completed because the book is still there. You had to have set it on fire to do the ritual. I don't know how the ritual plays into this, but we know that it wasn't completed. Considering the laceration, the injury on Angie's forehead was not bleeding as much as it should. I thought to this, I thought about this myself, 
Head wounds usually bleed a lot, and the fact that hers wasn't is really strange. It says the fatal wound was stabbed to her neck, and I believe that just fine. But when did this head wound occur then? And how did it occur? The bloody piece of duct tape stuck to her hair. The blood on it had already dried. The blood that was flowing from the back of Angie's neck created a pool. I don't know what this could mean. It makes me think of an episode of BBC Sherlock where there's a murder that occurs by someone using a very thin knife. And the person that's stabbed doesn't die until they remove their belt because the belt was holding the wound together. And I don't think that's what happened here, but it, you know, it seems, you know, kind of familiar. The effigies hung upside down, the four wax effigies that were created for the resurrection ritual. Why were they upside down? We still don't know that. There's nothing to suggest that that has anything to do with anything, but it's got to. There's the gold leaf katana stabbed into Kayade's effigy. The gold leaf rubs off easily. It was taken from the ultimate anthropologist lab. There's blood on the tip. So we think that this is the weapon that killed Angie. This is all the information about the caged child seance. The song is just one big metaphor. Kibo's flashlight, a function that Miu had added to Kibo, he, he can emit a blinding light from his eyes. Tenko's last moments, she died in a crouched position, the injury on the back of her neck was deep, but probably not enough to kill her immediately. Loose floorboard, right below Tenko, it was not loose before the seance. There was dried blood on the bottom part of the floorboard, I still don't know what this means. All this dried blood and such, and the fact that Tenko didn't die immediately, makes me really question the timing of the murder. Marker Stone. This seems to have no real bearing other than to describe the position that Tenko was supposedly taking. The Iron Cage had blood on it. And this really gets me because it's the only inconsistency in the seance. Everything went to plan other than Himiko removing the cage instead of it being Shuichi and Kokichi. And that gives me a real bad feeling. The hole in the corner, which was in Tenko, uh, which was in Himiko's corner of the room. Which is also where we think that the scythe or whatever it was, the murder weapon to kill Tenko, was found beneath the floor. The white sheet did not have a hole in it, but it did have a blood stain on it, meaning she was killed before the cage was removed, I think. The dog statue could not have been moved by less than four people, we assume. So that could not have been taken off during the seance. The magic circle. It was trampled, made it impossible to check the original shape. I don't know what bearing that has at the moment. The sound during the seance, that's probably the floorboards being moved. The sickle under the floor, the weapon that killed Tenko, we think. The blade was about six inches and the blood was still wet. Yeah, we really think that that is what killed her, right? Dried blood under the floor, that matches the blood with the floorboard. The cross piece that was cut away, someone had purposely cut it. And Kokichi fell through the floor in the room to the right, which is the room that had the gap in the floor so that people could get between the two rooms. So that's the evidence that we've got. So I'm going to try and go into the trial without too many thoughts in my head and just see how it plays out. And we're going to do that in the next episode. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then.